Hooray! Data Science Nigeria marks five years of transformational impact. It has been 157,680,000 seconds of running an award-winning and high-impact artificial intelligence learning, research, solution delivery, consulting, and AI startup incubation network. Let us celebrate some of DSN's major milestones. Over 500,000 learners have benefited from the DSN's free online and offline training sessions in artificial intelligence, data science, and digital skill-related classes. The organization runs the most expansive network of AI learning delivery in Africa, with 41 physical learning communities in cities and on campuses. It also organizes annual Pan-Nigeria AI introductory classes across multiple cities through its AI Invasion project. It currently has an online learners network in 49 countries across the world. Data Science Nigeria, through its founder, Bayo Adekombi, published the first AI book for kids in Africa. The book uses cartoon-like characters to demystify and simplify the basic concepts of AI and Python programming. The book is currently being distributed through a nationwide Train the Teachers program to ensure that every child has the foundational knowledge required to competitively prepare for the fourth industrial revolution and the future of work. The annual DSN All Expense Paid Bootcamp has become the numero uno of AI learning in Africa. It brings together some of the best global experts who visit Nigeria physically or connect virtually to teach and mentor young African talents. Each AI bootcamp starts with thousands of participants, with only 400 best participants making it to this intensive learning session. The 2021 edition had learners from over 20 countries. Today, DSN has become the biggest talent recruitment pipeline to leading organizations in Nigeria, providing access to top talents who have been trained through DSN's intensive, hands-on and industry-ready training modules. DSN has also validated its technical capability in the areas of consulting and solution delivery. It has successfully delivered over six million US dollars worth of professional service for leading global multinationals and development agencies like Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, World Bank, Mastercard Foundation, Chevron Nigeria, AI Commons, KPMG, Access Bank, and so many others. DSN remains very strong in artificial intelligence research, with over 13 academic papers published and accepted at peer-reviewed conferences. The inspiring works of DSN have been showcased at all the world's leading AI conferences. From NeurIPS to ICML to ICLR to Deep Learning in DABA. DSN's work in AI for Social Good was a case study of excellence at the foremost conference of the Association for the Advancement of Artificial Intelligence held in New York, USA in 2020, where the founder of DSN spoke as a keynote speaker. DSN AI Lab in Lagos is generously supported with research robots from the Computer Science Department of the University College London complemented with a world-class research workstation donated by NVIDIA. DSN is proud to have won the academic poster at the 21st edition of the ACM Conference on Economics and Computation, EC20, the world's premier conference on the interface of economics and computer science, organized by the Association for Computing Machinery, United States. DSN also won the Best Runner-Up Poster Award at the Deep in Daba in 2019, Africa's foremost AI conference, where the effort of Data Science Nigeria was also recognized with the prestigious Wangari Mathai Impact Award. DSN's work has been acknowledged across the world as a best practice in talent building, indigenous application of AI, community development at scale, early education in AI and AI for social good. Its work has been reviewed and referenced by the World Economic Forum, UNESCO Science Reports 2020, UNICEF Reports, African Union, Data.org, and many others. DSN was the only African finalist at the XPRIZE Algorithm for COVID Prediction competition. 
DSN was also part of the National COVID Intervention Team on the use of advanced epidemiological machine learning algorithms to flatten the curve. DSN runs a startup incubation center dedicated to artificial intelligence with a current cohort of 12 startups at its new center in Yaba, Lagos, Nigeria. DSN has transited from the generic theory of AI into practical solution development with a focus on how to apply AI at scale in emerging markets. During the COVID-19 lockdown, which created a major learning disruption to many students in Nigeria, DSN invented an adaptive artificial intelligence learning algorithm which was leveraged to deliver effective and interactive learning through basic SMS, feature phones on 2G network, and interactive radio platforms. This effort helped many learners who have no access to the internet or smartphones. Over 8 million learners benefited from this intervention through the funding support of the MasterCard Foundation. DSN has been a revolution with many firsts of its kinds, like the AI Summer School for Kids, Inter-University Machine Learning Competition, AI Hackathons for Top Organizations, Data Scientists on Demand, AI Tutors on Demand for Primary and Secondary Schools, AI Knowledge Box of 20,000 Learning Videos, Free AI for Beginners Free eBook, and its current effort to set up AI libraries at all the top Nigerian universities. As DSN marks its fifth anniversary, it is making some big, bold transition under its five perfect transition mandate to re-strategize for the future. The organization is recalibrating its vision and mission with focus on enabling 1 million AI talents in Africa and building AI solutions that will enhance the quality of lives and well-being of people living in emerging markets. It is a double-fold impact transition. Let us reflect on these big five shifts. Number 1. DSN is transiting into a global operation beyond Nigeria under the DSN brand name, that is Data Scientist Network, with an existing learner's network in almost 50 nations. DSN has become a global knowledge delivery network for the world. All its local and global extensions will now answer the DSN brand name. Number 2. DSN will run a dual business model as a social enterprise with DSN Foundation Nonprofit and DSN AI Innovations Limited, both in Nigeria and in the United Kingdom. This effort will position DSN for sustainability. Number 3. DSN is also changing its consulting model by becoming a distributed talent company. It will run a globally diverse network of expert consultants and partner companies who will collaboratively work with DSN full-time in-house staff to deliver world-class solutions under its new partnership program. Number 4. DSN is launching its learning network with more frequent online masterclasses, project walkthrough sessions, hands-on expert research sessions, and mentoring. These will be facilitated by some of the world's best experts. This expanded learning will also include dedicated programs for professionals, kids, researchers, and developers. Number 5. DSN AI Innovation will be unveiling Spot On, its geospatial AI precision analytics solution for retail and fintech, and ULearn, its AI-powered augmented learning platform that activates learning for every child. DSN is currently building more high-impact products in health, financial inclusion, agriculture, and others. It is a new season at Data Scientist Network, DSN. As DSN unveils its new logo to reflect its global positioning and expansion beyond Nigeria, the organization remains very committed to delivering high-impact AI solutions across the world while expanding its free training and research network across many countries. Welcome to the future with DSN, powering 1 million AI talents and delivering transformational AI solutions for 2 billion people in emerging markets. The 5th DSN anniversary.
Hello everyone and good day wherever you are joining from. We're glad to have you joining this session today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone joining from all across the world. We're so excited to have you on the session. You're welcome. Please introduce yourself using the chat and let's know where you are joining from and how you're excited to be on this call today. Today is an amazing and another session in our mentorship series. Today we're going to learn how we can solve industry problems with speech and text AI solutions. Yes, AI can speak our language and it can speak in our natural language. So let's learn today industry applications of natural language processing from one of our amazing mentors, Jyotika Singh. I am sure that you are all ready for an exciting time of learning. Just before we meet our mentor, let me introduce you all to Data Scientist Network. DSN is committed to raising 1 million AI talents and building AI solutions that improve the quality of life and well-being of 2 billion people in emerging markets. Originally, we were just at the 1 million AI talents, building this in 10 years, but now we are expanding as we have in our recent transition to now focus as well on building products and solutions that improve the quality of life of 2 billion people in emerging markets. That's big. And we are only able to do this due to our large and thanks to our large and amazing community. Our renewed focus will see us delivering on this vision through Community for Learning and Research, which is everyone on this call and which is why we have these kind of sessions, product development for social impact and partnerships for solution delivery. Our evolution from 2016 to 2021 has seen us grow from a learning and community based to also research and social good applications, corporate support and solution deployment, startups, ventures, AI vertical partnerships, AI for national development. In 2019, we were recognized as the number one artificial intelligence learning community and solution delivery network in Africa. Where at the Deep Learning in Daba conference in 2019, we won the Mathai Impact Award. We also won the best academic poster at the 21st edition of the Global Economic and Competition Conference, despite not being an academic institution. This was a really big one for DSN. We are also the only African finalist at the 2021 X Prize competition on building advanced AI algorithms to have address COVID-19. How amazing is that? A different, foremost, leading, big, world-class AI conferences, DSN research has been showcased, presented and celebrated. We have snapshots here from Triple AI, from New Rips, different conferences where the work of DSN has actually been showcased. We also released the first artificial intelligence and Python book for elementary students and beginners in Africa. If you need this book, you want to get it for a younger one, for a child, a word, a friend, Please feel free to use any of these links being dropped in the on the live chat and right here on the screen. Our new AI research lab is open here in Yaba, Lagos. And recently, two of our products initiated, conceptualized and developed all by DSN were selected in the 2021 Global Top 100 AI products by UNESCO. The two products selected are the EdTech AI Adaptive Learning Engine as well as prescribed rights. This is our dual business model for global impact through DSNA innovations, where we build cross-country learning and research communities and solutions. We see us doing this in career tech, fintech, retail tech, edtech, platform tech, and health tech. Here are the amazing startups that scale through our AI incubation program. We are really amazed and so, so, so excited for all these startups uh, in the first quarter. So if you are interested, the link is being dropped in the chat and you need to share this with someone that needs it. It's www.datasciencenigeria.org forward slash AI startup. Here is our world class advisory board headed by Dr. Ui Stewart, who is the chairman of the board of directors. We are so 
humbled to have these amazing people on our advisory board. All right, everyone. So let us meet our mentor, Jyotika Singh. Jyotika Singh is the director of data science at Placemaker in USA, where she leads development of algorithms in hospitality. Previously, Jyotika was leading data science at ICX Media, where she performed res and researched on natural language processing, machine learning, feature engineering, distributed computing, and data analytics. She's an inventor of multiple papers in data science, classification and reclassification algorithms, processes and optimizations for media and audience marketing campaigns. Outside her work, she has opened multiple open source projects and has been a speaker at over a dozen conferences across the globe to share her findings and work with the Python and data science community. She is passionate about encouraging women in STEM and participates in mentorship efforts to support the topic. And let me say, we are so glad to have her as a DSN mentor, especially for our ladies in AI. She was recognized with Leadership Excellence in Technology by National Diversity Council in 2021, in lieu of our contributions towards the data science community. So DSN community, please make welcome Jyotika Singh as she takes us on this amazing session. Hello everyone, I'm going to be talking about industry applications of natural language processing. Before I dive into the topic, I want to take one quick minute and introduce myself. My name is Jyotika Singh and I work as a Director of Data Science at Placemaker, which is present in multiple locations in the US. Placemaker is a tech-enabled, flexible hospitality platform that blurs the line between hospitality and home. I'm attaching here some of my social media account handles in case anybody has any questions that you would like to ask me after the webinar. You can feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. I will also be sharing this slide deck on Twitter later on. So if you uh, don't have a copy, you can feel free to grab it from there. So before we lead into applications of natural language processing in the industry, let's quickly talk about what is natural language processing. So natural language processing, as the term indicates, is processing of this natural language. But what is natural language? So it comes from language, which is the way humans communicate with each other. And as you can see, we all have very different styles of communication. Uh, globally, if you consider language, there is so much diversity in terms of number of languages spoken. Uh, within each language, there are so many different accents, different dialects and just different styles of communication as well. Some people like to use more abbreviations and some people don't. Uh, so there are a lot of components to language and it's also something that has evolved with time. So if you consider these abbreviations, about 15 years ago, they were not in existence. Uh, but now abbreviations like BRB and LOL stand for something and mean something, but it wasn't the case about two decades ago. So language is something that evolves with time and is really diverse. So when we're talking about uh, this language that changes with time, that's called natural language. And natural language processing, also called NLP, is a computer's process to understand language. So it can be something from as basic as counting word frequencies in a sentence to actually understanding a user's question and responding with relevant answers. So understanding of this language becomes an important component of natural language processing as well. Uh, let's proceed on to now uh, what the talk will cover in an overview. So we'll be talking about how different industries leverage natural language processing and what they do for examples of where you may have seen examples of NLP usage in the industry and then followed by actual NLP applications uh, specifically some popular ones that we can build using Python and open source tools. So let's dig into industries now. Here for this talk, this session, we'll be talking about three different industries, e-commerce, finance and social media. 
So starting with e-commerce, e-commerce essentially refers to buying and selling of you know, products uh, or services via the internet and where you're actually transferring money uh, and data to complete this transaction. There are two different types of e-commerce businesses. There are B2B, which is business to business, where businesses are selling to other businesses. Uh, example would be something like Shopify and B2C where businesses are selling directly to consumers. So example would be Amazon.com and any other such shopping websites. Uh, a lot of text data is produced within this domain. So just think about it. If you are looking at an e-commerce website, you have all these products. Uh, these products have descriptions associated with them, which is all in text. Then the people actually are who are purchasing these products are writing reviews about these products. So any of those comments by people are also a part of text data. And furthermore, uh, you may have noticed that there is a customer support feature for most of the e-commerce businesses where you're able to chat with the business or talk to them uh, for any problem that you may be having. So that's also generating a lot of data. So here let's look at, look at an example of a particular e-commerce website. It's called Target. Uh, it's a, a particular brand of the US. And let's just look at a typical experience on this website. So you're searching for something, let's say a Tumblr, uh, with the wrong spelling. So you actually type T-U-M-B-L-R. The real spelling is T-U-M-B-L-E-R. So even though you search wrong, it's able to uh, identify the product that you're looking for. You clicked on a product, which is a tumbler with a straw. So you see in the more to consider section, you have options for a lot of tumblers with straws. This is an example of natural language processing in action that you may have seen on e-commerce websites. Let's look at another example on the same website. This time we're searching for formal pants. So we click on a particular product and you know people leave a lot of reviews that help buyers make decisions. So there's some ratings that users provide, but then there are also some categories that users do not provide. For example, what are the reviews related to? Is it the fit? Is it any other feature like the color? And then you're able to select a filter there and filter down to reviews that talk about the fit. So this helps create a good user experience where people are able to pinpoint to the reviews about the feature that is important to them. So this is also an example of natural language processing where these comments don't come pre-classified, but they're actually getting saved and a, a classification engine is being run upon them to identify these, these little topics that form a part of the comment. So those were just a few examples of NLP in commerce. We looked at intelligent searching and we looked at product recommendations. A few other examples uh, would be comment classification, which we also looked at and sentiment analysis. So sentiment analysis feature is more for the business to understand how the consumers are reacting to their products that they're listing or any service that they're listing. So this helps them to identify problems or improvement areas and see what's really popular. What are people liking about a particular product? So this can also help inform future products that they create, keeping in mind the sentiment of the consumers who are interacting. Next, there are also other uh, important applications of natural language processing in e-commerce, including language translation. So today, a lot of businesses are reaching global audiences. So if the same website is present, in different regions, you want to make sure that you have some language translation techniques so you're able to present an information in different languages as well. Similarly, going forward, we uh, already spoke about customer service analysis and chatbots. So they are very related, but essentially customer service analysis is belonging to the category where you have interaction data with the customer, whether that's chat data or call data, and then you're saving that to analyze it and identify areas on how you can actually serve the customers better. And another area would be chatbots. Now, what are chatbots? They're essentially these little chatting options that you have on these different websites. But the difference is that you may not be talking to a person necessarily, especially in the beginning 
because sometimes user questions are something very basic that a database can retrieve. So for example, uh, can I know the status of my order? So that is something that a machine could actually just look up very easily. There are also a lot of advanced version of chatbots where it's actually a computer at the other, other end, but you may not realize that because the conversation uh, feels so real. But the goal is with chatbots to deploy these and have a lot of customer service volume be taken care of with the chatbots without they actually reaching with to actual human agents. So that helps save time and also that helps uh, guide uh, any resources we have in terms of human customer agents, customer service agents to uh, actual problems that need their involvement and take care of anything that can be automated uh, or anything else that can be handled by the bot uh, for the computer. So next we talk about the finance industry. Finance is essentially a broad range of businesses that are associated with money. So examples would be stock brokerages, any banks, uh, investment funds, uh, credit unions and so on. Now a lot of text data plays an important role uh, in the finance industry. Uh, examples include any news, articles, tweets on Twitter. Uh, then there are other types of data, which is a large volume of text data and documents, which is all around legal documents. So there are so many legal documents that exist in the financial realm uh, that this actually forms as an important data point that can use a lot of natural language processing techniques to make the whole flow and reviewing of documents and searching of documents much easier. Thirdly, another place where we are generating this text data is going to be customer support records. Um, and the goal is similar to how we have used customer service records in the e-commerce industry. So why really news and stock data is helpful in finance industry? So what happens is news in general influences people. And then what happens is any news related to stocks uh, influences investors. So people who are actually investing in stocks. Um, and any such news, whether positive or negative, influences the investors to make decisions about stocks, so whether they want to buy or sell. And any decisions made that way have a positive or a negative impact on the price of the stocks trading on exchanges. A great example here includes this one. This one time in 2021, Elon Musk tweeted about using Signal uh, and his followers took his tweet and you know got the wrong message out of it and it led to a great surge in an unrelated stock with a very similar name. So we see that's an example of how a tweet or a piece of text uh, that was released on social media actually impacts uh, the stock market. There are a lot of other applications of NLP and finance as well. A uh, main one is sentiment analysis. Uh, that really helps classify a particular news article or a tweet and the customer reaction to that uh, into different sentiments that ultimately help us understand the impact of that on the stocks. Tweet and news classification is also something that we saw an example of, but you know, there's so many tweets uh, on different, different topics and there's a wide variety of the kind of news and tweets that are produced on social media. So to filter down to the tweets or articles that are relevant to the finance domain uh, is an important classification task as well. And within that, you know, if you're interested in particular, uh, particular stocks and how they vary, then that classification comes in handy as well. Legal documents uh, are by vastly produced in this domain and reviewing legal documents can be a very manual and taxing task. So, uh, and actual NLP applications are around legal document reviews that help you know double check any issues with the document, any issues with the wording, uh, and even cross reference uh, to other legal documents available. So sometimes for a particular case, you may need to look at ten other documents, but you don't know what these ten documents are, and you have to manually make sure you identify them. So NLP techniques can making uh, make the document search much easier. Uh, additionally, sometimes documents are very large and document summarization techniques are also implemented with NLP that help get a summary level understanding of what's in the document. Language translation also plays an important role given that uh, the, the market is reaching global audiences 
and thus conveying information in individual uh, global languages becomes interesting. Customer service analysis and chatbots here follow the very same trend as they did in the previous industry, but its essential goal is to make the customer service better, understand the customer service internally and also make a bot a handle a lot of the customer service volume if possible. Finally, the last industry we are going to be talking about is social media. So social media is, you know, this, uh, this web network of digital channels that uh, are used for content creators to create and share content um, and for people to interact with one another, connect with their network, network of friends, network of, you know, professional uh, relations and uh, share their thoughts or posts or comments with the community. So examples of popular social media platforms include Instagram, Reddit, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and there's just so many more, so many platforms out there. There's a lot of text data generated uh, on social media, as you can imagine. People type comments, people post, and when they post, they have these captions or descriptions that go along with each post. Uh, also tags that are used popularly in a lot of social media platforms. Uh, addition to that, there are also a lot of chat data that is available on social media, which also forms as a source of text data. So you may wonder though, like we spoke about YouTube as well as a social media platform, but it is primarily video, right? But uh, actually associated with every video is a title of the video, is a description of the video and all the comments that people leave on a video, which all form a part of text data, which can be used and actually is used for a variety of problems uh, using NLP that are solved on these platforms today. So let's look at an example here. You see you're searching for natural language processing on YouTube, you click on a video, uh, and then what you see is on the side in the recommendations, you have a lot of other content which is associated with either natural language processing, machine learning, or very relevant similar topics. So the content that you clicked on has all these descriptions and the algorithm behind the scenes finds content that is similar to the one that you're looking at. Uh, and then that is what is being recommended to you. In an e-commerce setting, a similar thing was happening, but that was using more product description and details known of a product. And in this case, it's just the details known about the video that are being used. So the previous example is how we see uh, an application of natural language processing on social media platform, but then also data from social media platforms is, are widely used by businesses to do analysis on different types of topics. So it can be their product or services and how people might be reacting on social media to that. Uh, but then also some general studies uh, like this one that I've linked here, which is a paper on correlating the different travel trends between 19, 2019 and 2020 in regards to flight search and actually how that correlated with the content creation on YouTube and what contents were being created regarding what which topics. So uh, what type of you know word clouds uh, in the word clouds, what type of words were appearing in the type of uh, video topics that were being created and then what locations were people mentioning in their uh, actually comments that are interacting with uh, with these videos uh, from year to year. So in 2020 versus 2019 in the, in lieu of, you know, the pandemic and how that changed situations. So overall though, applications of NLP in social media go beyond what we have just seen. We spoke about content recommendation and sort of trend analysis, uh, but here as well, sentiment analysis and comment analysis plays an important role. For comment analysis, it's, it spreads beyond just the social media platform and to actually businesses who are trying to understand comments on social media around a particular type of content. And then sentiment analysis for the similar purposes as well. Another few sets of very important applications in social media uh, that uh, use some text data in the background would be sensitive content detection uh, and also fake news or spam classification. These have been increasingly popular applications and uh, a lot of these social media providers have built really strong algorithms that are being improved uh, as time progresses to keep fake news away, to keep spam content away, 
and to correctly identify sensitive content. Uh, lastly, customer support and chatbot is also an example that is being used in social media. And if you consider uh, some booking website, let's say Expedia, and you want to reach out to Expedia, you can actually go to Facebook Messenger and you can chat with them. And typically the first person at the interface there is you know, a bot and then you are transferred to a human if you want. Uh, so the chatbot application is actually used by a lot of businesses uh, to deploy their chatbots on social media, such as even a WhatsApp Messenger or a Facebook Messenger. Now that we have seen some examples of the industries and how natural language processing is used in those different industry verticals, where the text data comes from and what type of applications are actually popularly deployed, now we we'll look into implementing some of these applications in NLP. So the two that we'll pick that are very common to a lot of different industries are going to be sentiment analysis and recommendation systems. First, let's talk about sentiment analysis. So essentially sentiment analysis, uh, the main purpose is to identify a comment sentiment. So whether it is conveying any positivity or negativity or just a neutral tone. So uh, the applications are to understand if the person actually likes something or does not, or you know, reacted positively to something or did not. So in this case, we're going to look at examples, uh, the three that you can see on the screen. The first one is I love ice cream. The second is this is stupid, which is you know, supposed to be a negative one. And then third is you know, who wouldn't like a headache? The third example is a little interesting because there is a negation used. Headache is a negative word, but like is a positive word. However, when you look at it in complete context, you can tell that it is a you know, likely a negative sentiment sentence, but this is particularly harder for the machine sometimes to, uh, you know, identify correctly. So there are a few different implementation options. One is using open source tools and the second would be building your own model. So you can build like a standard, uh, you know, it's like a classification problem where your data is your text, your reviews and then your uh, you know output your y value is your sentiment so you would need some uh, label data in that case where you have you know sentiments for some sentences and then you know you can train start by training a very basic bag of words model uh, or a basic classification model such as knife base typically works really well for text data so that can be used as a baseline model uh, but you know in the industry uh, there is a particular trend where people do not want to implement everything from scratch on their own if there are tools that they can use to get to the same results or even better results. So open source tools form an important and interesting implementation option. There are particularly two tools that are very popular in Python. One is called Vader, which stands for Valence Aware Dictionary and Sentiment Reasoner. And the other one would be text blob. So they both can do sentiment analysis and the both are very popular. There are some things that work better in text blob and some things that work better in Vader. So for example, if your data is more like social media data or resembles, you know, data where uh, the aspects like people use emojis um, and those sort of elements are present in the data, then Vader may work better. Uh, but text blog, uh, you know, sometimes works better for different types of data. So if you're looking at, let's say, hotel reviews where the text may be a little bit more formal, there's like a sentence structuring that is going on there, there's usage of, uh, you know, proper grammar, then, uh, you know, one tool may work better than the other. And it's always good to take a little sample of, let's say, 50 or 100 random samples of your, uh, your reviews or your text data that you have and then pass them through both the tool options and see which one's doing better. So that's a really good way to know which tool might be perfect for your data. But they do seem to perform reasonably well. And let's look at the three sentences that we saw in the previous slide. So we do see that I love ice cream is getting classified as you know, positive in both, uh, both the tools, which does make sense. Uh, this is stupid is getting classified as negative uh, in both the tools, which also makes sense. But who wouldn't love a headache? Uh, you know, it's very marginally getting classified as negative in Vedo. 
uh, and for text blob, uh, it's actually like getting classified as positive. Uh, so we see there there's some aspect that uh, Vader may be handling better than text blob. The next application that we are going to be talking about is going to be recommendation systems and actually building these recommendation systems using text data. In general, recommendation systems are of different types. Uh, there are two particularly. One is the content-based recommendation system, which essentially recommends uh, a content, a product, whatever it may be, based on your interests of other content. So based on just the knowledge of the content that is of interest to you. Uh, and the other one is collaborative filtering, which is more based on people who also tend to like the things that I am looking at. So uh, if you look at it from a context of movies, if I have watched movie A and movie B, and this other person has watched movie B, we can say that you know this person may also like to watch movie A if I like those two movies. So it is taking that relationship based on similar individuals and not just the content. And often in the industry, you know, either one of them is used, but sometimes also a combination of the, those techniques are used to create a recommendation system that takes into account both uh, the factors of the content and also similar people behavior. So when we are looking at natural language processing, which is centered around text data uh, very heavily, uh, we do not look at com uh, we do not look at collaborative filtering. We look at content-based recommendation system, uh, and this is because this is primarily based on content. It is also a very popular method to get recommendation systems working because sometimes when you start, you don't really have that user behavior data known. So you may not have a database that contains user records at all. And that way, content-based recommendation systems is something that you can start with, you know, right off uh, in, in the beginning when you do not have a lot of uh, user data known. So the goal in a recommendation system that is content-based is to find a document uh, or a list of documents that is similar to the document in question and get that subset and show it as a recommendation. So it's essentially a text similarity problem where if I am a user and I'm looking at this particular video on YouTube and uh, I want to see recommendations of videos that are very similar to the one that I'm watching, YouTube is in general composed of a large corpus of videos, right? So we want to find which of them is close to the one that I'm watching closest in text similarity so a high text similarity score and that subset is what we'd be recommending to me as documents of interest so uh, let's actually look at an example and that that may make things more clear so let's say you have a data source uh, of YouTube actually looked at YouTube API collected a, a bunch of videos about 555 video samples uh, and the search term used was Python. Uh, now the problem statement is to recommend videos to the one being uh, similar to the one being viewed. So we want to build a recommendation system that way. Now in general, Python uh, is you know a word that can mean the programming language Python, but also the snake Python. So there is like a little bit of variability in what kind of videos uh, I would have fetched in my corpus, the 555 videos would have some that are related to the coding and then some that are related to the snake because I did not specify if I am looking at the snake or the coding in my search uh, search keyword here, which was just used as Python. Now we'll go on to computing text similarity, but there are a few different ways that can be done. So one uh, popular and more you know, simple and basic way is to actually get a TFIDF or count vectorizer feature from the text from all pieces of text that you have and then compute a cosine similarity to get text similarity between two documents. Very similarly, another option is using word embeddings uh, and there are a lot of open source tool options that you can use there with pre-trained models such as Spacey. So what you can do is you can pass your text through the numerical feature extraction, uh, word embedding extraction methods and then get a vector representation of your word words in a sentence. So a vector representation of your sentence and then you compute uh, the cosine similarity between these word embeddings 
of your document and the rest of the documents and see which scores are the highest. And third option is actually using transformers, which is a more of a recent development in the last three, three years or so. But a very popular one is BERT. It's a full form is bidirectional encoder representation from transformer. So uh, this is essentially a, a, a machine learning based technique for natural language processing. Uh, for pre-training, uh, it was pre-trained and developed by Google in 2018. So BERT was created uh, you know, and has inspired many recent NLP architectures and training approaches and language models. Uh, the examples include Google's Transformer Excel or OpenAI's GPT-2, ExcelNet, um, Ernie 2.0, Roberta. Uh, so it has really inspired a lot of other architectures, but essentially BERT is a pre-trained uh, on a large corpus of unlabeled text, including like the entire Wikipedia, which is you know, a, a few thousand million words uh, and also book corpus, which is again a few hundred uh, or close to a thousand million words. So it's trained on very, very large data. But what you can do with BERT also is get a numerical representation of your text, uh, passing it through the transformer method and then compute cosine similarity between the resultant vectors to get scores of similarity. This is more state of the art and you know also it has some drawbacks that you know it'll be typically take you longer uh, or it's a more complex model so you may need some different architecture to handle it but it is definitely more state of the art and has resulted in really great advancements in a lot of applications uh, although in the industry uh, a lot of times still the very basic classical approaches are used such as the tfidf or the word embeddings uh, again more in research transformers are taking the lead uh, but in the industry, it's a combination of all. Uh, either of them can be used and more, more commonly the simpler one to get something quick out there. Uh, and if you want to improve on what you have, then you know the transformers would be a good one. So let's look at uh, two examples. Uh, let's say we have one video which is more about Python machine learning data science. Uh, and the second is more about the snake Python. So we're looking at a ball Python byte as the title of the video. So they are, these are two examples of videos. So first, let's look, let's look at the first example of Python machine learning tutorial type of video. So this is my text. And then from the 555 videos I collected, I'm gonna get similarity between uh, those pieces of text. And I'm gonna get recommendation based on the maximum cosine similarity. Uh, so to do that, uh, let's, uh, let's try the first method is gonna be TFIDF. So for TFIDF, uh, we pass this, get the content similarity, get sorted by you know max score, uh, and then we see these are the top eight results. So uh, most of them, actually all of them make sense. They are all related to the coding language Python. Uh, the only one that is not related to machine learning is the number seven. It is still relevant because it is around Python programming language. Uh, but if your goal is to, you know, also segregate and, you know, more return content around machine learning, then, then this may be a, a wrong example, but it's still very related. So uh, if it's not related, I'll be highlighting that as red. This one is still related. These all look like good recommendations. Uh, moving on to the next tool, Spacey. So here we see in Spacey, again, all relevant recommendations, uh, all related to Python, some related to machine learning, uh, and three of them not related to machine learning. It's mostly related to the programming language alone uh, and you know potential applications uh, outside of machine learning as, uh, as well. Uh, so this, again, overall the results look good, but those are the ones that we may want to highlight and look into if that does not satisfy a purpose. And the third one, we look at BERT. So we pass the, the, the text through BERT and we get the cosine similarity of the resulting vectors. And here as well, we see that there are two videos that are more Python, less machine learning, but overall the list of top eight looks pretty good and very relevant to what we passed in. Uh, so, so that's for the first example. Let's go on to look at how the second example did, which is more around the snake Python. So we see we're looking at the ball python byte uh, video 
and we see the top eight for TFIDF. One of them is actually talking about a snake game using Python. So it's not the snake itself. It's, it's looking at the programming language Python and building a game that is you know, regarding snakes. So we see there's one incorrect, potential incorrect rec recommendation here, but the rest of them look very spot on and none of the other ones are related to the programming language. With Spacey, we see an even better set of results. All top eight look pretty good. None of them are related to uh, the programming language uh, and it's all related to the snake. So those are pretty good recommendations. And lastly, we pass the data through BERT and here as well, we see the top eight are very good. There's just one that is again, the related to the snake game in Python. So this is uh, again, producing relevant recommendations, but uh, except for one, which is very similar to what we were seeing in the top eight of TFIDF. So we looked at the results and we compared what they look like for TFIDF, Spacey and BERT, but you know, how would you really implement it in using Python? So these are code examples that I've uh, you know, snapshotted here on this slide for each. And they're a very limited set of lines because we're using existing functionality from open source tools or pre-trained models that we are using to get our numerical representations. So if you're, if you're using something like this, this may be you know, very handy. Uh, and I will be sharing this slide deck as I mentioned earlier. So you, know, you will have a reference to it if this is something of interest and you actually want to implement some of these or all of these on your own for any of the projects that you may be looking at as well. So, you know, which model to pick, right? So this really depends on the industrial use case. If my use case is to always have the top eight recommendations look spot on, then that's what I'll be testing on. Uh, but if my goal is, you know, something else, then, you know, my, my testing may be different. Uh, it really depends on the type of the data as well. So it's always good to test on a sample set and see how the different models are doing if you have any confusion. You may also want to you know, look at the computation time if you want quick implementations, uh, then which model you should use and you know, compare it based on that factor. And then lastly, the custom, uh, the custom coding requirement uh, you know, comes in handy as well. Like how much of it do you want to do yourself? Do you want to train a custom model here or do you want to use a ready to use tool like an open source method or some of the ones that we spoke about earlier? So you know, these are some of the factors to keep in mind when making the pick. Uh, and then make the pick accordingly. In the industry, it's also a very common practice uh, to at intervals, you see how your model is doing uh, on the new data, on larger amounts of data that have been, has been passed through it. And then you can make updates or you know, changes in your choices once you've collected more data. Often when you're starting, there's, uh, not, this problem may not already have been solved, so you're doing it for the first time. So it's important to establish a good baseline uh, and be in sync with some of the business decision makers in the organization and decide what type of performance is reasonable. Uh, you know, I've seen anywhere ranging from like 70% being very happily acceptable in industries to sometimes where they want to make things so much better that they want something more than 90% or just better than what they previously had in place. So all of those would be some things to keep in mind. Lastly, I want to thank everybody who's tuned in to this uh, session. Thank you so much for attending. Uh, it has been a great pleasure talking to everybody. I wish everybody all the best. Thank you. Wow, what a truly fantastic session. Thank you so much, Jyotika, for this awesome and enlightening session. We have learned so much over the past uh, and it has just been amazing. Can we all just say a big thank you to our mentor for this beautiful, beautiful session. We sincerely appreciate you so much. Thank you. Wow. I'm sure that we can all, we are all going to begin developing so many solutions to um, problems and use cases that we see around us at work and across all the GSN community. Let's work on this and let's make this happen. Thank you so, so, so much. The learning continues. Yes, the learning continues. We have a free AI program going on in 80 plus cities across Nigeria. 
you can register to learn in this face to face program. Yes, it's a physical program. It's face to face happening in hundreds of venues across Nigeria. All you have to do is register. You're going to get the link to pick a, a venue and register to attend in a venue close to you. So do all to register and continue learning. We look forward to the, all the amazing things that the community members are going to be doing with all this learning and the growth that is to come. So cheers to everyone. Let's keep learning. Let's keep raising the bar. And we look forward to having you all in the next session.